Jury at the bank down the road. You should have never doubted me. I'ma work to my last breath. I'ma hustle to my last breath. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, you should have never doubted me. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. To members of the executive of the National Transformation Alliance, to members of the National Transformation Alliance, supporters of the National Transformation Alliance, and to the curious onlookers and those who are still wondering if they should be part of the National Transformation Alliance, good evening. Members of the media, good evening. I thank you all for being here. And it is not, it says a lot by you all being here tonight. You know, usually like decades ago, even years ago, people will come to political meetings and it was okay, it's your right to attend a political meeting. That is no longer the case. I have been bombarded by hundreds upon hundreds of persons who have now voiced their fear of victimization to even attend a political meeting. That is what we have reached to in this country. And the focus of my comments tonight will involve this, what is known as democratic dictatorship. If we reach a point in a country where persons are afraid to voice their political opinion, afraid to even attend a political meeting, either because they work in the public sector and they know they will lose their job the very next day, or even in the private sector because they may lose their contracts, that is sad, and, but it sums up what we are going through in this country. We can speak about the incompetence of the government and their performance, but you're human, you can make mistakes. But when it comes to being vindictive, hatred, malice, bitterness, revenge, and you're in power, the worst thing to do is to give an ignorant person power and someone who has that type of character trait that I just mentioned. That is not what we want in this country. As I said, and I, I said in a media conference yesterday, and I said it several times over and over again, today it is me, tomorrow it could be you. Being a previous national security advisor, a minister in government, a commissioner of police, in all my years involved in politics, never have I seen a government spending more time to target and destroy their political opponents than they do in trying to serve you, the citizens of this great country. This cannot be right. I decided to return to politics to put an end to this type of democratic dictatorship. It cannot last. The first sign, the very first sign of dictatorship in a country is when a government attempts to take over the police service. And we have seen it constantly. Likewise, dividing our nation must also cease. Our country has been divided deliberately as divide and conquer has been the best way to win an election for some. So let me look at where, where we are now. People will call it the third party, the floating votes, the third constituency, the British constituency, whatever you call it. There will always be room for those persons who feel that, listen, I do not have to be a PNM till I'm dead or born a UNC and I'm going to die a UNC. As I mentioned before, that, that is a, is, is no, that's no longer a culture, that's a cult. And the same way it is your right to blindly follow your political party, and that is your right, it is also your right to analyze and ascertain which will be the, will be the best people, the best minds available to provide the best people, the policies, the plans, and the political will to serve you. And we have seen that bridge constituency evolving and increasing as we have gone along. It started in 1981 under the Organization for National Reconstruction. And a few persons, very senior persons, I, I got into politics and I'm pretty, I have very little years in politics, by the way. In 2006 or 2007, I was a temporary senator and I was involved in the COP. In 2010 to 2015, I was arguably involved in politics and that was it. After that, I've been involved as commissioner of police and so forth. But when I got into politics in 2005, there was a, two individuals, Jerry Yetming and Joseph Tooney. And I, I got involved listening to what they had to say. And this third constituency, this bridge constituency, it is difficult, but it takes a lot of work, patience to build. When they started the UNR, a quick story, they started the UNR and they said, we have to start from scratch. There, there are people out there who want to believe that there can be a third constituency. So they had this political meeting in Toko. And Joseph Tony and Jerry Atming, they set up all, the, all the, the stage and the lights and, the, and everything. And the meeting was supposed to start at 7 p.m. At 6 p.m., a man pulled up with his dog and he and the dogs just sat in the corner, a corner just like this. And Yetning was telling Joseph Tony, well, listen, what's going on? Half past six, quarter to seven, just the man and the dog is there alone. 
And at 7 o'clock, Joseph Tony told Jerry Etming, listen, regardless of what, this is how we start, even if it's one person we start. So as soon as Jerry Etming said, and we're about to start the meeting, the man in the door gets up and walk away. So he ended up speaking with no one at all. But it started something. And it started something of the ONR with that third constituency with 91,000 votes in 1981. 10 years later, it, the name changed to the National Alliance for Reconstruction. Same British constituency, same belief that you don't have to be PNM or UNC till you die. It reached 127,000 votes. We then moved 15 years, 16 years later to 2007 under the Congress of the People. And I see a few ministers here from the Congress of the People. Mr. Samuel Grieven, Nicole Dyer Griffith, and a few others. We also have persons who are actually deputy political leaders of the Congress of the People, who are now, who are now deputy political leader of the NTA. And the Congress of the People then moved to 147,000 votes. 15 years later, is a, it, this is it. So from 91,000, moving to 127, moving to 147, it shows that the country is evolving and persons are starting to realize, I do not have to be a ketchup or mustard. And if you want to be, that's fine. But there can be that option and it builds. And the reason it is building more now is because younger persons, when I say younger persons, persons just below the age of 40, Lauren, it just missed out. On that. Just, oh, yeah, just, by, just by, mm. And those persons now are realizing that, listen, mommy and daddy can't tell me who must I must vote for, whether it is a PNM or UNC house. It is just the opposite. Younger persons, because of technology, social media, they are now educating their parents to, and make, make them understand that if PNM is having a bad day at the office, a bad five years, nothing is wrong with changing them. Nothing is wrong with changing the UNC. Nothing is wrong with forming and being part of a bridge constituency. And that's what we are doing today. We are here to continue to build in a platform to ensure that we have an option. We have a voice. We have representation. And we want to be part of something that can change Trinidad and Tobago. Again, sadly, the present government, as I mentioned, they spend more time trying to target and destroy even me than they do the present opposition leader. This is what they do. Spend more time in trying to persecute political opponents instead of putting focus on serving the country to the point that even your most fundamental right has been breached. And that witch hunt must end. When you hear a minister of national security, and I could speak about a minister of national security because I sat in that chair, when you have a present Minister of National Security on social media, he spends more time communicating with the public, spitting venom, hatred, bitterness to anyone who is not a PNM supporter. That is a dangerous precedent in this country because a Minister of National Security, his resources are it is very powerful. He has a virtual operational control, if he can, of the defense force the um, intelligence agencies, the police service, customs, immigration. And if you can use your resources and your influence because of your hatred and bitterness for others, because nothing more than they have in a different political view, that is a sad state of affairs. You cannot want to serve a country, but yet you hate half of a country. And that can, has continued over and over again. When it is you have, a, a, and it started even with, when I was a national security advisor, you as a political leader get a document typed written i have a six-year-old nephew that could have understood that the email gate was was fake because you there's no such thing as gmail.com there's no such thing as at at g at at com typographical errors you could see it was typed and still you had a hundred thousand persons who pnm till they dead believed it because the pnm has a, a a mission if you say the same lie over and over you will get the people to believe it and our job is to make sure the country gets the facts and you make a decision for yourself. So what he did is that he used email gate and like a coward that he is, he decided to hide in parliament to, to say the worst things about persons, inclusive of myself. And as soon as it started, I said, oh, take my, my phone, take it. Make a fool of yourself. Knock your socks off. And they couldn't find anything. And seven years later, I got back. I forgot how to use a BlackBerry by the way when I got it back. But that is how they operated. To try it. And they actually, strange enough, it may very well have been part of the reason they won an election. Because a country can easily be manipulated, deceived by persons who hold high office because you believe that they cannot be that deceitful. If what they say is true, if what they say, well, then we believe it is true. And I had a media conference yesterday and the focus was on three things. And it goes back to the democratic dictatorship that I speak about. One had to do with interception of mobile devices. 
When we reach a point in this country, again, it's in 2009, 53 persons, their devices were being intercepted by the Manning administration because there was not the Interception of Communication Act at the time. The 53 persons included Keith Rowley. It included Kamala Prasad Bissessa, Winston Dukaran, Anand Ram Logan, Gary Griffith, Anil Roberts, anyone who was perceived as being against the government at the time, intercept their phones. Lo and behold, bam. 2010 comes in, the Congress of the People and the UNC, the, under the People's Partnership, we get in government and we said, okay, let's amend this. And we actually thought we got it right. The amendment was made known as the Interception of Communication Act. And what then happened was that we said that it can't just be a prime minister could direct the head of the SIA at the time to intercept whoever I feel. No, we will put three persons of in, in positions of authority that they alone must have the authority to intercept. The chief of defense staff, the commissioner of police, and the director of the SSA. Ten years later, we now found out, oh, wait a minute, who appoints these three people? The politician. It is the prime minister that can handpick the acting commissioner of police and he could then tell him, look, I put you there, I got you in, I could get you out. Bam, I think that this person needs to be intercepted. The chief of defense staff, I could give you an extension. I appointed you, I by bypassed three other people. Know that you have to sing for your supper. The director of the SSA, I can handpick anyone. It could be a rich me, it could be anyone, and we have seen it, that I could appoint. So the three persons have been handpicked. Which means, again, there can be political influence. I have the um, utmost regard for two of the three persons because I was in the military with them for decades. We actually joined at the same time. I, um, that is the present chief of defense staff, Daryl Daniel, and a director of the SSA. I wouldn't call his name. But the thing about it is that who is to know that in a few years' time, who is to know that the present acting commissioner of police, he would not be pressured? Because the reason I can say pressured is that I was there. I saw the pressure as the commissioner of police because of that democratic dictatorship that must end. It cannot continue. So to the people who may be paying them till they die, by you trying to state that, listen, I don't care what you say, I am going to support this man and this party. Today it is me, tomorrow it could be you. All that it will take is for you to have a difference in opinion with one individual and you will see hate, you will see bitterness, you will see a man totally out of control. And that is not the type of power we want to give to someone who has that hatred in him. So when we had this uh, interception, it means obviously, and when to find out that a previous commissioner of police, someone who is now a political leader of a party, his phones are now being intercepted because you can just use the words, the words intelligence. And that is a sorry state of affairs for this country. It means that any one of you all right now, your phones can be intercepted. And this, however, is a powerful tool that is important to help reduce crime because it helped me tremendously in what I did that was known as predictive policing, anticipating the crime using social media. We had a social media monitoring team that the NYPD assisted me in building. We looked at different types of technology and we were able to pinpoint and ascertain what may take place to prevent crime from happening. And it wasn't coincidental that because of that, there was a drastic reduction in crime. But that is different to you pinpointing and targeting persons because the same thing that you did pre-2010, you're doing now, which is try to utilize the resources of the state, the technology, to target political opponents. This is why it is, I said, uh, in that media conference, I am taking Mr. Jacob to court and I want to put you on a witness stand because enough is enough. You have pushed the lies for a year about firearms. Well, then your name, man, go on the witness stand now and tell the country on what grounds you have invaded my privacy, you have invaded my confidentiality because of using the word uh, uh, intelligence. Then there was a big one. And again, to show the fear factor in this country, the media. Our media have now become traumatized. And nothing against the media. In fact, it is just the opposite. I'm here to try to defend them and to advise them. You all need to stand up. Ten years ago, there was something known as Section 34. Section 34 is a tea party compared to what we are seeing now with that Nelson matter. And the media are virtually silent. The law association is silent. They are afraid. The media is now, and, and the PNM, they are good at it. Notice they are all quiet. They stay silent for seven days and they know it will go away. And instead of the media pushing this envelope, pushing it to the point to realize what, look at Section 34. For weeks on end, it made headlines. And the PNM were able to utilize it and manipulate it conveniently. But here we have a situation with this Nelson matter. 
And then you have an attorney general who has the audacity to disrespect the office of the DPP, to trivialize it and say, well, that is irrelevant. We will move on in our civil matters. It is the same AG that tried the same nonsense with myself when they attempted to go, go ahead with an audit and you audit an organization but not speak to the person who was in charge of the organization. And the AG says, well, you'll just speak to Gary and then we'll move on. Now, this AG has proven to be, honestly, one of the most incompetent persons I've ever seen in the office of the Attorney General. Every time he opens his mouth, he makes a mistake. So this is where we have reached to now, where the media have become virtually pressured. And that, was, and that is what happens when they actually go to a media conference in the diplomatic center. They are afraid to ask the hard-hitting questions because they don't know if it is that um, this guy, this, this prime minister reminds me so much of a little ornament my son had. He used to put it on the dashboard of the car and the head just starts going like this. Every time the man gets angry, the head just starts bubbling up and down. When he gets angry, he will lose control. And the media now, they'd go to the diplomatic center. Well, you know, the, um, I know TV6 is here, the, the, the honorary minister of um, communication is Ria Tate. So they will send Ria Tate to ask the specific questions to make sure that the, the prime minister looks good. They will never send anybody else but Ria Tate. Notice all these so-called leaks that take place in the gov um, that is convenient for the government. Rear Tate alone gets it. So the Minister of Communication for EPA and the Rear Tate will always be the person. The CNC3, TV6, I ask you all, be bold, be brave. Why don't ask the hard-hitting questions? Prime Minister, why did you give a commissioner of police $45 million and tell him these funds are to be used directly to hire foreign attorneys to arrest political opponents? Any other country in the world, this, this government will collapse. Yes. And there have been so many, uh, the media, I ask you, be bold. We had a situation yesterday when I revealed the minutes of the Police Service Commission the minutes of the Police Service Commission emphatically showed that a crime was committed because we heard of all of this with the meritless. And the only way that a meritless could be rescinded is if it is that the meritless is um, decided upon to be withdrawn by the Police Service Commission. And I had a media conference yesterday and I showed it to the media. And it showed that the documents that came here from the Service Commission's department and the minutes from the Police Service Commission, at no time did they ever withdraw the merit list. So if the only governing body that has authorization to withdraw a merit list did not withdraw it, it meant that somebody used a letterhead and somebody operated outside of the law. Somebody broke the law. You know, not one person in the media made a comment about it because they're afraid of Keith Rowley. They're afraid to say, well, wait a minute. If we start putting the pieces together, we could see where it is going. So let's just moonwalk like Michael Jackson and say nothing. I have given you evidence to verify that a crime took place. That meritless fiasco is one of the biggest embarrassing situations this country has ever faced, well, until the Nelson matter. Because we have a situation here where a president did not adhere to the law. She had one thing and one thing alone to do. That's all she should and could have done was to forward it to parliament. And she refused. A president did not adhere to the law. Again, only in a, in a banana republic could you see a president still existing. She should have been removed from office. We have a prime minister treating president's house as if it is a post office and decides to go there, meet the chairman of the police service commission, and then foolishly, he decides to boast because his arrogance got the better of him. He stepped out of his crease and I'm going to stump him out now. Because he says that, well, it is my right to meet with anyone and give documents. Well, hear what, Keith. This is where you slipped. In that Jamaican case law that gives a government the authority to hand over official correspondence to an independent body, which is their right, that was not the case here. Because when he handed when he, that document, and it is a scene right here in the minutes, they stated that Mr. Barrington was one citizen who signed, or who signed this document and handed it to the Prime Minister. So Mr. Barrington has equal authority, power, and influence as each and any one of you all here. He is as equal as any one of 1.4 million citizens. So as Keith Rowley stating that any time any citizen handed a document to him, it gave him the authority to come and call the chairman of the Police Service Commission and meet with her. So the document was null and void because it was a two-man committee appointed by cabinet. And the minutes are here to state that they voiced their, the police service commission voiced their disgust. Hear the words. They voiced their disgust 
by the actions of Keith Rowley by, in, in, in his actions um, about them. You have an independent body voicing their disgust. The minutes also state that cabinet was trying to pressure them to suspend the commissioner of police. That is misbehavior in office. So with all of this that took place, apart from the fact that the merit list was rescinded without the approval of the only bona fide authority, we also had a commissioner of police who was suspended. And again, when you look at the minutes, at no time was the commissioner of police then suspended by the only relevant body that could do so, which is the police service commission. So it meant that somebody also suspended a commissioner of police in a country without authority. That is sedition. That is treason. That is misbehaving in office. And not one person in the media had a word to say because they're afraid of Keith Rowley. They're afraid of what may happen. Because again, you know, there's, there are advertisements and there's all sorts of different things. And I asked the media, now is the time you need to stand up. We can forget about the law association. In this situation with the merit list, it was the biggest fiasco and the embarrassment that this country has seen by two of the main office holders in the country, along with an independent body, and the law association went silent. People cannot be singing for their supper because of what they want. If I had done that, I would still be Minister of National Security. I would still have been Commissioner of Police. Trinidad and Tobago, young persons, there's a time you need to stand up for what you believe in and not just work for something for the almighty dollar. And to the media, I'm asking you how it is that we could tell you that we have evidence. We gave you the evidence to show that the merit list was removed by an unlawful authority, which meant that they broke the law, that a commissioner of police was suspended without authorization by the relevant body, which also means that under misbehavior in office and sedition, and the media is afraid to discuss this. This year, that silence is deafening. So to the media, I ask you, he can't do anything. He can bubble, he can bob his head, but he cannot do anything. It is time the media stands out. The same way you all stood firm on Section 34. Where is the noise now about Nelson Mata? Where is the noise now to show that a, an, an offense took place? And the person who would have broken that law, I would expect, and which I have told the police, I've given them the report, is that the three previous police service commission members must be interviewed and, the, and ask them for all their emails that they sent to the chairman and if the three police service commission members confirm that at no time did they withdraw the merit list, at no time were they involved in the suspension of a commissioner of police, the person who did so must be arrested on sight. Somebody must go to jail. <laughs> and let me tell you, and, the, and then when you they should also be able to meet with the previous chairman of the police service commission and find out from her, did anybody interfere, influence, intimidate, harass her, that caused her to panic to, do, uh, uh, to make a decision that was contrary to the laws of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. And that person under Aiden and Abetin would also and should also make a jail. And that's what I've asked the media. So instead of trying to ignore it and hope that it goes away, we have to come forward and do what we believe in. As it pertains to my position to the executive and to the members and to the supporters and to those who are still ascertaining if they should join. This position for the commissioner of police, let me clarify this. Keith Robbie is very shrewd, but my military training, I will play a chess game and I'll always be three steps ahead of him. The anticipation for Keith Robbie was hopefully that he would have taken that audit, sent it to the police service commission, which he did, and hope that the police service commission will say, well, okay, because of this situation, based on the audit, we cannot shortlist Gary Griffith. What he did not anticipate is that there was so the, the enthusiasm of these six jokers, the three previous members of the police service and three present members, handpicked by politicians, paid hundreds of thousands of taxpayers' dollars, just like Stanley John and Barrington, and nothing came of it. They anticipated that we will just pad a report filled with lies, rumors, and hearsay, give it to the police service commission, and they forgot the most fundamental thing in any aspect of an investigation, natural justice. Because if it is you're doing an audit in an organization, Trinidad and Tobago, the first thing you must do is to speak to whoever was the head of the organization. Speak to whoever was the CFO. In their exuberance to want to bust my truth, they forgot. So it shows that these six jokers are either incompetent or they were so handsomely paid, they already had it premeditated as to what the report would have been. 
So for again, for Mr. Jokey AG to have the audacity to state, well, all that is required now is to take, is to meet Gary Griffith and then we'll send it forward. Uh -uh. You have already poisoned it. And if you, AG, feel that you could do that, well, then it's time to bring back Landit because that was the exact thing that Keith Rowley used to have Landit scrapped. So when I reapplied for the position of Commissioner of Police was to put Rowley exactly in the corner that he has now. Because he said I was his biggest mistake. I was his biggest mistake. Yet in March last year, he contacted his cabinet when there was a problem with Wasser. And he said he could wish he could get 10 Gary Griffiths to, to, to build this country. This is a man who said he had a, I was his biggest mistake. I was your biggest mistake, but in April last year, you called Faris, AG, AG. I know her that Gary Griffith is leaving because he never asked to reapply. Correct, Prime Minister. Well, make sure he stays and acts. He cannot act Prime Minister because uh, he is a career police, he's not a career police officer. Go in Parliament, change the law because I cannot lose Gary Griffith. Keith Rowley have lied to the country. How could that be your biggest mistake when it is in April last year you told your AG to change the law because you didn't want to lose me? The law was changed specifically to keep me there. <laughs> what happened were a number of different things, apart from certain minimis who wanted to dress like me, talk like me. Right? I wouldn't call, I wouldn't call Stuart Young name today. I'm not, I'm not into the calling names. So, so mini-me... Right, so Minimi had to go on a stepladder and whisper to the Prime Minister, and then all of a sudden things change. And that is your right. If it is that you as a Prime Minister could be so easily influenced by persons in your cabinet, then you're not fit to govern. A leader is supposed to absorb everything and get facts, get data, not rum shop talk. So the Barrington report, filled with it is alleged, it is rumored that we have heard. The Stanley John report, same thing. The audit, same thing. And then when this happened, and you said, and then we went across to the AV drilling matter, where AV drilling, I don't care who you are, whether you're PNM or UNC, I am not going to victimize you, I am not going to witch hunt you, and I'm not going to turn a blind eye if you break the law. So in the AV drilling matter, you, you send your attorneys and say from the civil matter it has ended, but there was still an investigation by the police. And the investigation by the police, and I will use the same quote from Keith Rowley, it made for disturbing reading. So Keith, the same words, disturbing reading. So when I saw it, my eyes, my eyes opened. I asked Colin Mimbert, I just need $80,000 TT to get an engineer to verify what I am seeing that made for disturbing reading can be verified. The Minister of Finance refuses to give me $80,000 TT for a simple thing for an engineer. But they were excited to give me $45 million to target political opponents of the PNM. This has to stop. The dictatorial dictatorship has to end. And again, so when I decided I reapplied for this position, what is to, was to expose Keith Rowley. Not because I want the job, not because I'm getting the job. I know for a fact what the end result is going to be because in the military, how we have trained, before we go into any, any war zone or any situation, we analyze it, we look at the task, we look at the enemy forces, we look at the mission, and we know what the end result is going to be. So I would apply. And then when I apply, when Keith Rowley realized that, his job was to say, okay, let's you see this, let me send something to the Police Service Commission in the hope that they will not shortlist him. Because they know once I get out of that gate, that is it, I'm gone. The, the rest of them not catching me. So the Police Service Commission ignored him because my attorney showed to the Police Service Commission, you never spoke to the man, you never dealt with him. Under natural justice, it cannot be touched. So if and when I am shortlisted, I applied the first time in 2018, I got more points than any of the other persons who applied. In 2021, I got 17% more than the most senior police officers. So if and when I'm shortlisted, unless it is that the Police Service Commission has a blissy passade in there that will cry and whimper if she gets buffed and then something can change, I would come first again and let it go to Parliament because the Mr. Mr. Man was a coward and did not want to do that. He did not have the strength to reject me in Parliament. He wanted the Police Service Commission to do the dirty work for him. So let him reject it in Parliament and the country will see him for what he is. Because in my last year in Trinidad and Tobago as the Commissioner of Police, it was the highest reduction in every violent crime in 25 years. From August 2020 to August 2021, there were 342 murders. It was the, the only time we had that was 15 years ago. Every single crime was reduced. The police trust and confidence moved from 14% to 55%. 89% of the public said they wanted me to return or had no concern with me returning. It also showed that the, the public was starting to buy into the fact crime was going down. Since my departure from August 2021 to August 2022, 
586 murders, so from 340 odd to 580 odd. The highest number of murders in the history of Trinidad and Tobago in any given year. Keith Rowley is responsible because the decisions were made by him that caused this to take place. And now he must bear the brunt of it. So by him rejecting me, it will show to the country that this man is saying to himself, I do not care what is best for the country. I do not care about the bloodshed. I do not care what the country wants. I do not care what the people want. I do not care what the police service commission says. I do not care who comes first. It is all based on me, me, me. And this is going to show the country once and for all that this man must be removed from office. The least trusted, people did not believe in them. There was a, they despised the police. If we were able, and this is not me, my team, because I built a team around me of some of the best persons available. If we could have done that to transform the organization that was least liked, to turn it around to be the most liked in three years, we will do the same for every aspect of the public service in Trinidad and Tobago. And let me add, unlike Keith Rowley and unlike what we see in governments, what governments do is that for you to be part of the government, for you to be part and leading a country, for you to be part in serving a country, you must have the party card based on whoever got in government. And I don't operate like that. We have seen it with Keith Rowley. Because he has a problem with me, he does not care that, all right, this might be the better person for the job, so let me appoint him. I do not intend to operate in that manner. I do not care if you are PNM, UNC, ABC, or XYZ. The NTA, how we intend to operate, that is why we have that word at the end called alliance. It's an alliance of minds. It is transformation. Taking away this old-time politics that believe in that only when we win, who was pulling the chair for the political leader, who was financially sponsoring, who was the person around, they alone must be state board members. They alone must be ministers. They alone must be ambassadors. It does not work that way. And I could give you a quick example. I always say I don't like to call names. But there's an individual in the PNM. He is a PNM person. And every time I speak to this man, he crawls my blood. He frustrates the life out of me. And that is Mariano Brown. But I could tell you something. If I am a prime minister, I will want somebody like that. Because I don't care if I don't like you. I don't care if my blood doesn't take you. I want the best people for the job. But because Keith Rowley has a problem with Mariano Brown, you will sideline him sideline him and this is a member of the pnm this has to end because what we intend to do is get the best get the best minds available the persons who really care who want to serve who's is, you're not in it for yourself and when we do that that is how we can transform trinidad and tobago uh, well no time is running out so let me just run, let me just close off here because i could have i could have gone on and on all day Right? But as I conclude, again, I want to show something again as we put into hypocrisy. We have a prime minister, again, double standard. You, there's a saying you can't be half pregnant. This idea of doing something, you're not doing it. And he continues to be half pregnant because on one, how it benefits Keith Rowley is how he will operate. And I'll give you a simple example. When they had the special branch report that was leaked about a certain government minister. They started to jump on their high horse and say, well, listen, this matter must be investigated. How does this leak come out? But when it is you got the leak of the Barrington report, you got the leak of the Stanley John report, you got the leak of the audit report, and it gets to the only people who had that information was members of the National Security Council, and it gets to the Minister of Communication for the PNM Realty. And she gets it, and it is published. There's no concern about those leaks that should be investigated under, under tipping off in the Proceeds of Crime Act. And then there's another matter, even recently, um, as it pertains to with the merit list. The merit list being leaked, all of the things being leaked, nothing happened. So there was a document I saw here with a certain minister. And this minister, another mini-me, he has the same height, different individual. He acted unlawfully and irrationally when he decided not to recommend an assistant commissioner of the Board of Inland Revenue to the position of commissioner. It also stated that the individual, she was ambushed at the meeting with the minister. And then it ended with the minister was ordered to pay the, um, the individual cost to be assessed by a registrar. So what this meant is that this individual, because he did not adhere to what was required, it cost the taxpayers. What did Keith Rowley do to this, this individual? Nothing. But then Daryl Smith, when he was fired by Keith Rowley, Keith Rowley said the reason he fired Daryl Smith was because he made decisions that cost the taxpayers money. 
it shows the double standard, the hypocrisy of Keith Rowley. Trinidad and Tobago, this is our time to work. We have to stand firm and do what is required for this country. You need to believe. You need to believe that there can be a government that really cares for the people of this country. We need to believe that we can unite the country. We need to believe that we can select the best people, assemble the best minds, gather true patriots to serve you in government. We want you to believe that we can transform Trinidad and Tobago. We want you to believe. And as I close, I would like to let everyone know, yes, there's immense darkness in this country. There's a lot of evil in this country, but good would overcome evil. There's immense darkness in this country, and light would overcome darkness. So I, as I close, I wish you all a happy Diwali. And not taking a word from another Griffith, I wish a happy Diwali to all my brothers and sisters. Thank you. You should have never doubted me. I'm on my to my last breath.